Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Today I'm going to start with a page 102. It's family roles and changing relationship, gender equality and experiences of family life, different feminist perspectives on equality and power in the family, including liberal, radical and Marxist feminist. Different feminist perspective had slightly different perspectives on equality and power within the family, although all are in favor of equality. Liberal feminism. Liberal feminism is based on the idea of equality of opportunity. In a conjugal relationship, men and women should be free to choose both their role and how these are performed in a family context. Liberal feminists promote practical and realistic ways of creating a gender balance within the family. This recognizes that some women choose to focus on domestic and child rearing responsibilities, other focus on a career and some want our need to combine family and work responsibilities. Equality of opportunity is based on the idea that men and women can compete equality in both private and public areas. Other forms of feminism argue that the patriarchal nature of society give men an advantage in both the home and the workplace. So basically, first of all, we need to understand one thing. What is we are supposed to discuss today? It's all about the feminist perspectives on the on the role of women uh, of female uh, roles are the conjugal roles in in the in the sight of uh, fa different feminist approaches so first of all uh, we got uh, liberal feminists and according to liberal feminists i mean they simply uh, accentuate on the equality and normally uh, they simply refers to equality in in opportunities uh, for instance if a person a male person has an opportunity to work in an office so same uh, uh, same opportunity should be given to women. A, a person who gets ten dollars per hour, a female should uh, be paid on the same scale. So liberal feminists they accentuate first of all equality, uh, no gender discrimination. First point. Secondly, it's all about the fa financial equality. I mean, for instance, one is getting one, this one, another should be getting the same. One thing. Second thing is that. I mean, according to feminist approach, I mean, they simply uh, consider it is the choice of uh, the partners. I mean, they need to decide, they need to decide which part of task they want to opt. For instance, even it is possible that a female loves to, to work outdoor and the male person of the family can work a domestic task. So according to liberal feminist, it is simply the will or the free will of uh, both the partners uh, while living in a family structure they need to decide either they want to work outside or inside the home so this is we have in the uh, family uh, it's a liberal feminist feminism one thing and second thing is that i um, mean according to feminist uh, approach one can say that uh, according to them uh, we are living a male dominating male dominating society uh, uh, patriarchal uh, roles are practiced in the society and according to them it is a clear practice one can see that clearly uh, in the working place at the same time uh, at home uh, we can see the advantage of males over females can be seen or observed the second is Marxist feminism Marxist feminism apply Marxist ideas about economy equality to an explanation of gender inequality in conjugal roles in capitalist society they see women performing a service role in the family, which gives them the status of unpaid servant. This role is sometimes performed willingly, but more often they take on this responsibility because their partner is unable or unwilling to do so. With more women now entering paid employment, they may be doubly exploited in the public sphere of work as paid employees and in the private sphere as unpaid worker whose labor primarily benefits men. Marxist feminists therefore argue that women increasingly suffer from two forms of economic exploitation, patriarchal as unpaid domestic laborer whose work benefits men and capitalist as paid employed whose labor creates profit for a ruling class. In this respect, capitalism is the real cause of female operation because it involves relations of domination, uh, subordination and operation. A female exploitation inside and outside the family will continue for as long as the capitalism exists. So according to Marxist feminists, one can say that they simply put each and everything on the economic grounds. I mean, they simply consider there's a term which is used normally, a double shift. And according to Marxist feminists, I mean, they simply consider that they are the women's only who not only 
uh, work as unpaid servants at household. Uh, just, you know why? Because some of them uh, would love to take the responsibility of child rearing uh, our domestic task, but most of the women had to take the responsibility because their partners are, are not able to perform that duty on a better scale or they are not willing to perform the same duty. So unwilling to perform, their partners are unwilling to perform or they are not able to perform at that level which can, uh, you can say, instinctly a woman can perform the household. One thing, second thing is the, that, I mean, uh, uh, according to Marxist feminists, I mean, they simply consider uh, as for as uh, women are working outside, outside, okay, they are looking forward to the career, but while working in the capitalist society, things are not that uh, in their favor because they have to work to fulfill demands of the, of the rich class or the ruling class. So basically, women are on two tracks and on both tracks, they are not, uh, you can say, they are not the one who are the achievers. I mean, at home, they had to work. It is difficult for them. By chance, they want to take their responsibility. They are bound to take their responsibility, one thing. Secondly, it's all about the inequality, the social inequality, plus the economic inequality, which force uh, paid workers, paid workers, especially females, to work for the ruling class perspective. They have worked to, to, to boost uh, the economy of the capitalist society by doing that might be it is possible they are achieving what they want to but most of the time they are not able to get they wanted because they are living according to the Marxist feminist uh, they are living in a patriarchal families and it's uh, society and in while working in a patriarchal fa society it's very difficult to to get what you want in the presence of male dominate male domination so the next one is radical feminism radical feminism sees patriarchy as the primary source of male dominion domination within the family. Firestones argue that bi biology is the essential gender difference from which all the cultural differences flow. The fact that women become pregnant and are forced to depend depend on men creates a culture of sex discrimination. If the technology can free women from this biological <coughs> dependency by enabling children to be born outside the woman, an essential gender difference will be removed and male power of discrimination will disappear. I was so surprised while reading all this. I mean, it's so strange, I don't need to say it's stupid, but the thing is that, I mean, according to radical uh, feminism, the simple consider, I mean, uh, the main issue which simply bound uh, women to work uh, within home, uh, work dom domestic tasks as, as they become pregnant. So once they get pregnant, I mean, they are forced to, they are bound to live at home. And during that period, they had to work willingly or unwillingly. So to radical feminists, I mean, the best thing, I mean, they can get their benefits or they get their opportunity is that, I mean, we need to do uh, such steps. We need to take such measures. We need to take the help of technology so the birth can be uh, achieved outside the mothers. So once, I mean, we, you can get this technology, you are able to get... Uh, these facilities so obviously they, uh, there will be no boundary no force uh, no pressure on women to stay at home and to work uh, for domestic tasks or uh, they need to work uh, like childbearing and these kind of stuff so this is very strange but still this these things exist in in this world a second argument is that women should exploit the values of feminists uh, such as a sense of community family understanding in fact in Betty and sharing these are the characteristics that make them different from men whose interests are built to patriarchal values of aggression, selfishness, and greed. So this is one of the things, I mean, we need to understand at, at the same time, according to Firestone, uh, by uh, genetically or by instinct, one can say that uh, biologically, psychologically, women are, are, are more soft uh, in nature because they are the one who can simply uh, more sympathetic towards uh, the weak, they are more sympathetic towards uh, their child. So this is a biological phenomenon. As compared to men, they are more aggressive, a bit greedy. They are not that emotional. They 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 are to some extent selfish. So I mean, the discrimination is that it's on the basis of biological uh, phenomena. It's all about the instincts. So. When a woman becomes a mother, most of the mothers, I mean, they they, they uh, instill such feelings in their in their personalities that they are more suitable 
to to engage in primary socialization and in child rearing uh, on the other hand uh, by instinct biologically one can say that men are not that kind that supportive that sympathetic towards their children so this is i mean it's all the theories we have in the feminist approach towards <coughs> the conjugal roles so the conjugal the next article is conjugal roles and debate about gender equality in the family including housework child care power and emotional work this is the next article which is which is uh, which they have the connection with this so what is conjugal roles uh, in the past there were clear behavioral a guideline for two adults in a nuclear family the wife mother worked in home raising children while the husband father's role was mainly outside the home as economic provider uh, there were not many opportunities to develop personal identities that differed from the social norms indeed the plenties uh, for breaking away for the norms were severe ranging from male violence against women who tried to reject or discuss their role within the family to general social criticism contemporary gender roles still have some connection to those of the past the role of mother is usually marked out differently from that of father they are however not as limited by social identities as they once were and instead are usually open to discussion negotiation people have more personal freedom to decide how they want to interpret parental roles so we need to understand one thing about the conjugal roles i mean if we simply uh, consider the traditional nuclear family one can say that in traditional nuclear family things were or the rules were were decided uh, as as a norm as a social norm and nobody has the dare courage i mean in the past to 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 simply reject their rules i mean for instance uh, it is crystal clear um, i mean 50 60 years before that women are are uh, are are need to stay at home and just to to engage in the child rearing and in primary socialization so all these kind of things all these kind of rules are are normally taken are given to uh, to mothers and on the other hand fathers they used to do the out, outside work to, uh, they are not interested in while performing in domestic tasks so this is one of the thing which is clearly can see in every single society in traditional nuclear society so now with the passage of time we need to understand it's all about debate is there today i'm just which i'm actually we're trying to understand so it is basically that the 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 debate on the conjugal roles how with the passage of time their conjugal roles have changed over uh, over the period of time and uh, when we talk about the conjugal role first very first thing is the house work and child care as i mentioned earlier it's the traditional nuclear family was the family uh, in almost all the society which has a clear dimensions of uh, the roles of or the conjugal roles mothers in uh, need to be at home to perform domestic task father need to be outside the ho home for paid employed uh, paid employment or business whatever they just try to do just to eke out their family so uh, housework and child care domestic labor refers to the maintenance of a home and family that involve a range of two a range of day to day tasks such as cooking cleaning child care several observation about contemporary patterns of domestic labor within the uk emerged from recent studies gershney uh, observed that women of all ages ethnicities and class do more domestic labor than men women spend more time on the routine domestic tasks while men spend more time on jobs such as repairs and gardening this division of labor reflects both traditional beliefs about parental roles and the fact that women on average spend more time in the paid workforce so this is one of the thing which is all about the workforce one can say that still it is practicing still it is practicing it's very common in almost all the societies that uh, most of the household work is performed by women most of the time spent with killed ch the children were uh, children are women and most of the work uh, of repairing or you can say a hard work you can say that it's almost done by men so women spend more time in household spend more time with kids and raising children on the other hand uh, male members of the family they used to be outside the house and just to engage in paid employment khan found the levels of housework that women did were slightly reduced by paid employment one the other hand retirement or unemployment increased female housework and reduced that of her partner ramos 
notes that domestic labor is more likely to be equally distributed when the male is unemployed and his partner works full time. So we got two different dimensions. I mean, first of all, it's by Ken, according to Ken. Now with the change in the level, I mean, for instance, if if uh, a male person is not able to uh, is not able to get a job, so I mean, obviously he is the one who need to spend more time at home, and they can perform the works which is. Uh, generally done by women one thing second thing is that if the woman is doing uh, paid employment i mean she has to be i mean uh, outside the home for a long time so at that particular issue at that particular level one can say that now at that issue one can say uh, the woman uh, uh, have a chance to share the burden of household tasks by men so those women who are working the employment job they are outside uh, the family uh, just to work, just to eke out, just to earn are the breadwinners. So one can say that at that particular issue, one can say that uh, then uh, male members of the family can uh, can spend more time at home to to perform those duties which are generally done by female. Although more women are now in paid employment, women still do the majority of the work within the home, and this is particularly evident. In families with dependent children, women in this situation generally perform many of the boring aspects of childcare, such as feeding, clothing, while men focus on less boring or more pleasing, such as playing with their children. Will Mote, however, argue there is less dependency or traditional roles when dividing up tasks in home, changing families, and why the social relationship means that domestic labor is negotiated by every couple depending on their individual circumstances. This significant factors is deciding who does what in the family or time and preference not gender culture beliefs about the male and the female abilities and the role may also help explain domestic labor differences uh, Pilcher uh, found that older people unlike your, their younger peers can counterpart did not talk about equality but instead though uh, <clears throat> thought about gender roles responsibility and relationship in traditional ways this reflected their socialization and life experiences where men undertook limited household work and married women who had limited involvement in paid work and domestic labor was divided by the gender. Sullivan suggests that industrial societies has experienced a quiet revolution in conjugal role, men doing a greater share of house, housework and women less, men spending more time on childcare, the family group become more home center and which really generate another new development is is the idea in the media the new men who combine traditional male ideas masculinity with talking on a greater share of domestic work and being good father fully involved in raising his children so this is we have to to tell you about i mean what is the housework we got so many dimensions so many ideas we have I mean, first of all, we need to understand one thing is all about the traditional families. One thing in traditional families, equally distributed inside the house, or female outside the house, uh, male, one thing. Second thing is that when we talk about UK or other developed countries, we can see that with the passage of time, with the involvement, with the socialization, uh, with the social networking, awareness, media, so many things play uh, a part in shaping uh, a different ideology in female because they are more uh, carried or an oriented in the last 10 to 20 years. So as they are trying uh, to uplift their lifestyle of standard of life, standard of living, uh, and obviously for that perspective, they have to work outside the home. So, uh, uh, so one can say that in developed industrial societies, one can say that we have got a new concept. The concept is the new man. What is new man concept? New man concept is father need to be need to be more uh, supportive, more cooperative, and he need to be good a father. I mean, if he equally share the burden of the child rearing uh, with his uh, partner. So one can say that clearly, according to Sullivan, one can say that in UK especially now, uh, when women are uh, having a career opportunities and they are working as a paid employment, one can say that now the burden has equally shared on men and women. This one thing is clear. Second thing is that it's all about the age differences as well. I mean, the aging population are basically they are traditionalists, so they hardly think about about the roles, uh, the changing of the conjugal roles. They are not talking about about this a lot. But when they simply, according to their experience, and they simply see the new generation, then one can say that they are to some extent more acceptable 
about the changing of the female role. So according to this paragraph, one can say it's all about the new men, it's all about the change in the ideology of female, I mean, why they have changed due to uh, job opportunities, due to, uh, uh, you can say, paid employment. So all these factors play a really good part. Once we need to talk about the change in the patriarchal uh, society, especially, and in reference to the conjugal role. This is important to understand. So this we have in reference to the workforce. Uh, I mean, how the, with the past of time the workflow has been changed. Now we got a new approach, which is functionalist approach. What the functionalist approach say all about uh, about the changing of the role? It is important to understand. It is important to understand what the functionalist simply consider is the changing of the conjugal role is the practice of the day or not. So I mean, just give me a second or two to understand. Traditionally, functionalist approaches see family development in evolutionary terms. From this perspective, uneven gender relationship uh, where males and females have separate roles, characteristics of early industrial family gradually give way to symmetrical relationship based on joint conjugal roles. In late post-industrial society, this is based on the idea that as societies pass through different stages of industrialization, gender roles gradually met through a process of what Wilmot and Young called stratified diffusion stratified diffusion as conjugal roles in the upper class move towards greater equality these changes come come down uh, through the class structure they were adopted next middle class families and by the middle class of the 20th century the working class the traditional functionalism see men and women as applying different family roles men generally to, uh, take take an instrumental role dealing with the people in an objective unemotional way based on a mutual beneficial relationship for men to be successful in their providing role outside the family they need instrumental direction because they are traditionally spend more time within the family women tend to take an expressive role so we need to understand what is functionalist is all about the traditional functionalist they simply say i mean by the passage of time things are entirely changed change a lot and he they simply the functionalist simply consider it's a stratified diffusion what is stratified diffusion stratified diffusion is all about uh, one can say that in the upper class one can see the clear differences in upper class male and female both are has decided to distribute data on the basis of equality so there is no discrimination of gender in upper class and when we talk about the stratified diffusion so one can say that as the industrial society has changed a lot with the passage of time so the diffusion is also taking from upper class to middle class and when we talk about the middle class now middle class is taking a lot of time to digest to diffuse all those roles now uh, in middle class most of the families i mean they are working on the same uh, strategy as the upper class is already doing in the past for instance now in middle class for instance it's possible both a uh, man and woman they are out uh, of the family just to work just to eke out just for the benefit of their family they both are working outside in office or in, in paid employment whatever we call it and so and now uh, in recent uh, you can see years one can say that this diffusion which initially started from upper class to middle class now one can see this change in working class as well so basically this is the thing and second thing is that it's all about the instrumental roles what is instrumental roles instrumental roles is all about uh, emotional no i mean the males are a bit you can say harsh they are more straightforward they don't involved in emotional uh, perspective of, of a decision. So whenever they're out, they do their business, they do a uh, job, whatever they do, they are emotionless. They don't uh, work according to emotions. I mean, they have to work, they have to earn something for the kids, for their family. So normally one can say that, one can say that the males agent generally take on instrumental roles. It's all about, uh, uh, one can say that it's all about the uh, the same level, for instance, they, when a male person talk to another male, it's all about the equality. Male to male is equality, no emotions. I mean, for instance, you are doing business, so you are, emotions are not involved in it. So it's all about the instrumental roles. When we talk about the, uh, the family, uh, females, I mean, females are performing expressive roles. Expressive roles is all about how to join family together, how, uh, how to share emotions, how to, how to cater, how to, uh, take you can say that triple shift you know what is triple shift is all about in my previous lecture i told you it's one for instance pay work 
then uh, you are working as a uh, unpaid servant at home according to Marxist feminist and the last thing is that even though uh, one can say that the families are other females are involved emotionally as well about their kids about their family about their husband about their partners so expressive roles are those roles which involve emotionality uh, just how care uh, worriedness sympathetic towards uh, the family members so this is we have in reference to the functionist when we talk about a Marxist family the Marxist approach it's very interesting Marxist analyze focuses on family as involving complex conflict the power struggle Morgan illustrate this uh, through three family economies political moral and emotional so the political economy is about how money is received controlled and managed the husband father usually control the most valuable resources such as family income and so have the greatest power <coughs> it is usually man who makes the most important financial decisions other areas of major decisions making in two income families relate to the uh, whose work has the greatest priority when for example the family moves due to a change in employment families are more likely to move to a new home for the man's job rather than the woman's so this is one of the thing about the markets we need to understand when we talk about the markets uh, perspective of changing role one can say that still uh, we need to understand three uh, family economies so the political economy is all about the how the money is earned how received how control and how to manage so normally according to this theory one can say that still the preference is given to to men because for instance the example which is quoted here is if a man uh, has changed his job and they are thinking just to move to another place or an, another city so if the job is involved uh, uh, with men so obviously decision will be taken but if women need to change the job and they have a chance to move to another city or a place it is hardly uh, taken in action so obviously all the money which is uh, generated which is um, earned either from men or from women normally it is taken to the male members of the family the moral economy refers to the values and the norms relating to the conjugal roles and responsibility of different family members the female partner can exercise high level of power through her ability to organize family resources and behaviors even where her partner may be the only breadwinner so moral economy is all about the values and the norms as i mentioned so many times in my previous lectures all about the primary socialization i mean the women's mother females they are uh, normally the one who simply transfer inherit uh, the norms and the culture uh, related things to the next generation so it's moral economy the emotional economy relates to the interpersonal relationship and what dallas called effective power if someone loves you this gives you power paul suggests this is the family power so according to the third we got in and we talk about the market we need to understand three different <coughs> family economies political it's all about the money emotional it's emotional is all about i mean you can say that just emotional blackmailing for instance if male want to do something and he tries to emotionally blackmail his partner you know that don't you think you love me no our love has changed a lot no you don't love me that much before marriage and now you have changed in the presence of children so normally the the janta who take the effect of emotions are the love uh, is a female so they can do whatever you are asking for this is called emotional economy and moral economy is all about well, all about the inheritance is all about uh, uh, the norms uh, the uh, norms the values the traditions the culture need to put on to the next generation this we have in the market uh, uh, interpretation of how the conjugal roles has been changed and one of the thing the last thing which is mentioned in the market approach is the victims low confidence are believed by the victim or other that the victim deserve it economic or psychological dependence on on the offender fear of further consequences more, more violence so according to according to market theory one of the point is that normally when males are the breadwinners and they have all the money they are the decision maker one can say that by uh, taking all those advantages normally most of the time male members or male partners are involved in in violence in abusing uh, why and why uh, the, the female members are not that uh, aggressive or can't retaliate because they they are a bit uh, you can say sensitive uh, to the consequences for instance her male partner leave 
her alone it's difficult to raise kids i mean without his without her partner one thing second thing is that might be the one of the thing which is involved in in this is i mean male member is the breadwinner so if he is the breadwinner he simply leaves how could be possible to take on the family without expenses so it's and this is what we have in it and the last thing today which we need, we need to wrap up the debate about whether the experience of the family life is positive or negative for the family members so it's very interesting there are certain benefits there are certain things which are uh, i mean totally against uh, uh, in in while living together so first of all i need to tell you something which is the consensus what is consensus means i mean what are the benefits what are the benefits we have while working in a family and what are the conflicts we have we have in uh, in form of living together as a family members functionally stress the positive aspect of the family life where they see the benefits as outweighing the possible cost one need to understand they believe that the nuclear family is the best we have in terms of fulfilling a range of needs and functions for both individuals and society such as companionship security emotional physical sexual psychological and economic raising children while functionalists such as parsons argue that contemporary families play an important stabilizing role for both the individuals and society post modernist focus on individual psychological stability this involves questions about identity who we are how we understand our position in the society the culture globalization has given people more choices about their everyday behavior however the disadvantage of this almost unlimited choice is that it can cause uncertainty about who we are and how we are supposed to behave the old certainties of class gender age and ethnic social identities no longer guide us on how to behave the sense of personal and social responsibilities created within the family has wider benefits for the community because the children are given clear moral and behavioral guidance this also involves a sense of moral commitment to other that forms the basics of social responsibility within the family adult partners play roles based on domestic labor and care for others shared economic provision and so on showing both personal sacrifices and commitment to the other family members so uh, what is the consensus theory in reference to the functionalist approach for instance as the functionalists simply say i mean the nuclear traditional family is the best option we have in the prosperity of the family development one can say that so first of all we need to understand why according to functionalist nuclear family is the best nuclear family is the best because it's all about the companionship one thing it's all about the commitment to each other it's all about the children rearing i mean both partners play important part while dividing their roles outside and inside the home this is what we have and uh, i mean according to functionalists or you can say that functionalists in a uh, post modernist approach one can say that they simply believe uh, yes with the fast of time with the awareness globalization it's the movement it's uh, social networking sites and all media uh, have given a lot of emphasis on the changing roles uh, of the male and females uh, in a nuclear family so according to functionalists they don't deny uh, the changing roles of male and females in the society are as are as working in the nuclear family this is not the the cases they simply say okay the best thing is the nuclear family one thing but with the passage of time the changes we have in nuclear family or we have some alternatives to nuclear family this is okay we can't say for sure that these things are this should be abandoned functionalists they simply emphasize nuclear the best it's all there are so many uh, primary socialization companionship commitment financial assistance to each other the love all there's all these factors are there while we are talking in nuclear family and we are talking to the functionalist approach of the working uh, uh, at home or outside the home so the last thing we have is the conflict theory so what is the conflict theory i mean why Uh, according to certain approaches or certain sociologists that family is responsible for the ruin of the female uh, members of the society the conflict interpretation argue that the cost of family life cancel out its benefits within this approach there are three general views those who see the family as psychological harmful some writer have suggested that nuclear family can have damaging psychological effects on its member social socially oppressive and exploitation of women and thirdly having a dark side inducing domestic violence and child abuse so according according to the conflict interpretations about i mean we should not live uh, we must not live 
uh, in a nuclear family or in family is that there are three different perspectives. First of all, it's psychological. Psychological means you are always under pressure because you simply consider you are bound to. So obviously, when you are bound to a certain place and you are not able, you are not able to change the atmosphere, you are not able to change the rules. Obviously, psychologically, you can simply damage your personality. It's possible one can say that the female have the tendency to work. They have the tendency to think differently. They have, they are more innovative as compared to men. But uh, psychologically, one can say that if you keep on living, stick to uh, to a uh, to a same structure, it is possible you are damaging your psychological uh, input. Socially oppressive means and exploitation means according to uh, to the Marxist feminist, one can say that I mean the most of the women they are exploited by unpaid servants. Why unpaid servants? Because socially one can say that uh, women are not among the decision makers. Uh, as I mentioned in the last paragraph, one can say that in Marxist theory, one can say all the money which is controlled, which is earned, uh, even earned even by male and female are simply given to male members because they are considered to be more uh, decisive, they are considered to be more appropriate to decide certain things. Or one can say that they are more capable of doing complex tasks or complex decision making. And the last thing is, is it's very the thing which is very harmful for the family is that the violence. So because uh, we are living, we are living in a patriarchal society. We are living a male dominating society. So one can say that the domestic violence and child abuse is always there um, in, in the family while you are negotiating with the conjugal roles. The Domestic Violence World Health Organization 2002 figure estimate that around 70% of female murder victims are killed by their male partners and more, and that around 21st, 25% of all women's partner in their <clears throat> worldwide experience sexual violence by an intimate partner in their life, although there are wide variation across different countries. So one can see that clearly in the past few years, one can say it's 70% uh, the murderers uh, of female are the male partners. So one can simply clearly see that how uh, the domestic violence can lead to the death of the female members of the society. Then again, it's a child abuse. Child abuse has strong links to domestic violence. Men who are violent towards their partner care are also often violent and abusive towards children in their care. The most likely abuser, according to the UK National Commission of Inquiry into the Prevention of Child Abuse 1996 is someone known to the child, particularly a male partner or step parent. So, I mean, this is one of the things uh, what we need to understand domestic violence is always, all the time, from male to female. Then it's all about the child abuse. One can say that according to the commission, one can say more than 90% the child abuse is from the male members of the society and it's some kind of uh, psychological effect as well when a uh, male partner are not able to pay job uh, to have a job i uh, mean or even they have a job they are not satisfied uh, uh, with the ambience of the family or they're not satisfied with their partner so one can say that most of the victims of child abuse uh, are by me members of the society so this we have for today and inshallah ta'ala inshallah ta'ala tomorrow i will start with the age and lifetime the social construction of the childhood it's all about the different uh, you can say the perspective of how the child is raising i mean the differences how over the past uh, few years and in, in in recent times one can say i mean that the family and the different members of the family has changed uh, due to industrialization or post-industrialization. Take great care of yourself and until uh, tomorrow, be amanullah.